Hello, and thank you for your interest in reviewing case studies published by CART, the Conservation and Adaptation Resources Toolbox. We truly appreciate the time that you will dedicate to improving both the relevancy and the quality of CART's case studies. My name is Carly Jewell. I'm a conservation biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in our Science Applications Program. And in this video, I'm going to be giving a brief tutorial that I hope will kind of orient you first and foremost to the purpose of CART case studies. We will talk a little bit more in depth about the external review process and some logistics associated with it. And then we'll wrap things up by talking about what kind of feedback we are seeking. So let's talk a little bit about the purpose of CART case studies. CART's case studies are concise, semi-technical write-ups of completed resource management and conservation projects, as well as actionable science. And the hope is that these case studies will not only capture successes and lessons learned from completed work, but also spark connections and conversations among folks tackling similar conservation challenges while trying to share outcomes and tools and resources that are not otherwise available through some other type of publication like a peer-reviewed journal article. They document work that's been completed across all scale from landscape to project level. So you'll see case studies um, capturing work done at a state level to a multi-state level, all the way down to projects at a very specific location. CART case studies are written in a standardized format, and they're all housed in our case study library in a hope to increase access to relevant information while reducing the time it takes to search for it. And, and finally, we often work with students and recent graduates to develop these case studies. So they are a great student internship opportunity. So let's talk a little bit about audience. CART case studies are written for a wide range of conservation and natural resource professionals, researchers conducting applied science, as well as landowners and agricultural producers. And as I mentioned before, they are written in this semi-technical writing style. And in that writing style, we try to avoid the use of discipline-specific jargon and write in as direct, active, and concise style as possible. So our case studies are developed by CART student authors, oftentimes current students or recent graduates on behalf of project contributors. And project contributors are resource managers and researchers who share lessons learned from their work. And so I wanna take just a moment to talk a little bit more about the development process. To start, we begin by working with project contributors to really gather relevant resources that can be reports, uh, planning documents, really anything that's going to help us understand the who, the what, and the where of the work. We then engage in discussions with project contributors to try and understand some of those additional project elements that aren't always found in reports or work summaries. That can be things like specific techniques and level of effort required to implement, um, in addition to, you know, what would they want to share with others who are thinking about completing a similar project? So once we have all of that background information compiled, we've had a couple discussions with the contributors, we begin drafting content. And many of our case studies, um, once we have a draft ready, we go ahead and complete three rounds of review for each case study that we publish. And this includes an internal review, a contributor review, and an external review. And so as an external reviewer, you will receive case studies after they have already passed through two rounds of review. One, which is the internal review conducted by the CART team, and a second review that comes from the case study contributor. So once a case study undergoes external review, the CART team then works to create 
both a publicly accessible web product and printed material for each case study. And so before we dive into some of the nuts and bolts of the external review process, I want to take just a moment to orient you to what a published CART case study looks like. Each CART case study in its final version will be published on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service website and includes a two-page handout. And now that we've seen the final products, I want to note that the case studies that you will be reviewing are not yet published. So they are going to be in a Google document template. Looks a lot like this one. And each case study template you review will follow the same format and contain sections for both the longer online web page that you saw, as well as the shorter two page handout. And there is going to be a lot of information in the Google Doc template that you're reviewing, uh, some of which will be less relevant to you as a reviewer. And I want to take a few moments to cover some of the most important parts here. So from the top of the Google Doc template, you will see the title of the case study as well as the case study reviewer table. And this is where we track peer review for each of our case studies. Once you've reviewed a draft, it's really important that you remember to add your name, your affiliation, and any additional comments or the date to the reviewer table. So even if you had no comments or suggestions for the case study, um, you know, you still conducted a review of it and it's important for us to track that review. So please add your name. It would look something like this. Here's my name, my affiliation, and the date I reviewed the doc, which we will say. So moving past the case study reviewer table, you'll see that the draft of the case study is divided into sections. There is the background and introductions, the key issues address, project goals, project highlights, lessons learned, and next steps. So remember that we develop both an online web page version, what we call the longer version, which is what you are looking at here, these longer online versions, around 300 words max, and a shorter two-page handout version for each of our case studies. And so for our case study drafts, we have divided up the template to have all of the longer versions at the top here in sequential order. And so as an external reviewer, we only ask that you review the longer online version. One thing you'll note, which might help you understand the expected content of each section, is that the section headers include a description of what kind of information should be included in that section. For example, the introduction includes an overview of the program and or project, and should answer questions like, who are the players? What are they doing and why? And so we suggest that you read through the entire first draft before leaving comments related to the overall content. Uh, something you think may be missing in one of the earlier sections uh, could actually be addressed later on. And, in terms of leaving suggestions or edits, we ask that you leave edits in the form of comments or as suggested inline text. So I'm going to demonstrate both of those. If you were to leave a comment on this, um, you could highlight the text you want to comment on and you hit the add comment button here. You would say insert comment and you can write whatever you want that put it there and it's going to leave a comment trail for the case study author to come back and look at. The other option is to edit in suggesting mode. So on this top banner here, you will go from editing mode to suggesting mode. And this is a great feature because it enables um, 
us as the CART team to see what exactly was changed. So maybe you don't like this text at all. You could suggest deleting that text and it keeps the text there while also adding suggestion text for what you would like to see there in its place. Maybe something like this is a case study about wildfire, for example. And so this is the use of suggesting mode. This way, when we see your changes, we can see what exactly was changed and address it quickly. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about the purpose of CART case studies, we've looked at a case study draft template and talked through the various sections and some of the, the nuts and bolts for how to conduct an external review and provide feedback. I wanna talk a little bit more about some of the feedback we are seeking. And so first and foremost, you know, we feel so fortunate to have you as part of the external review team. We think that this team has a wide range of knowledge and expertise that they bring to this process. And your review really ensures that case studies make sense across different backgrounds, that they capture topics accurately, and it provides an opportunity to suggest additional information that you think would help support the case study narrative. Your expertise is especially helpful in the lessons learned section, where we hope you can ensure that the lessons shared are actionable to resource managers like you or people you know and work with. Additionally, it's entirely possible that we've missed jargon in previous versions, so we appreciate you in helping us identify jargon or other issues in instances where text might be a little unclear. And at a, you know, at that bigger picture, we want to know if ideas are flowing and building upon each other in subsequent sections. And so that's, you know, letting us know if we have hit consistent language and we've provided adequate context. We think that good flow for a case study really ensures that they'll be more digestible and scannable to our busy readers. And I want to wrap things up with talking about some feedback that is a little bit less useful for us on the CART team. And first and foremost, these case studies capture examples of thoughtful natural resource management and actionable science. And these case studies are meant to convey both the successes and lessons learned for quick transferability across geographies and jurisdictions. And while these case studies are meant to catalyze discussion, this review is not really a space for, uh, you know, project or research criticism. And, and tied to that, right, we've talked about how we intentionally use this semi-technical writing style to ensure that the material is understandable across a broad audience. You know, if you're reading through a narrative and you really feel like there needs to be some more specific discipline um, oriented language integrated into the case study, you know, go ahead and leave us a comment. Let us know um, what you think that language should be updated to. And uh, we will review that and, and try to think about how to integrate that in while ensuring um, accessibility to a broader audience for this case study narrative. You know, and lastly, we ask that you try to provide as constructive feedback as possible. We are really hoping that there are some clear ways to integrate whatever feedback you might provide. Um, student authors are one of the, the lead, the main authors on these case studies and are really a huge reason that this is even possible. And so this is a great opportunity to foster their learning and growth as young professionals and future leaders in this field. So we really advocate for as constructive a feedback as possible. And of course, if at any point you're reading a case study and you just need some more um, feedback or you have questions or there's something you wanna connect on regarding kind of the case study structure or style, please go ahead and, and email me, reach out. I will make sure that my email and contact information is available in this recording. 
I want to wrap things up with a final thank you. We can't tell you enough how much we appreciate your willingness to serve as a CART case study external reviewer. And I wanted to have a final slide here with my contact information. Please reach out at any stage uh, of the review process. I'm happy to answer any questions. And also wanted to direct folks to our website on the Fish and Wildlife Service website where you can get more information about CART. Thank you all so much.